Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about frameworks, particularly about the Zachman framework. But before I get into the John Zachman framework, I'd like to just set a baseline about what I mean by the term framework to begin with. So, for the purpose of this discussion, the term framework is a method for integrating all thoughts and all products regarding the structural relationship between objects in a system. So, if I have a system, for example, a vehicle, a car, and I have a collection of manuals, user manuals, mechanical manuals, uh, pictures about that vehicle, uh, HTML files about that vehicle, anything about that vehicle, including the vehicle itself, all of these objects that go to describing the vehicle need to come together in some logically bound fashion to explain to a third party that's looking at it what that is. And what we use is a framework. A framework is that logical organization, that logical structure that binds all these products together to describe an object. In 1987, a gentleman by the name of John Zachman, who is a business process engineer for IBM Corporation, was working on an integrated services architecture for his business. As he was discussing the, the architecture with his colleagues at many different levels, he noticed that the term architecture kept bubbling up, but in each time, in each conversation, in each context, it meant something slightly different. And it typically meant something slightly different based on two things. A, the context of the conversation, and B, who the actors in the conversation were. Typically, the actors in the conversation would explain an architecture from their perspective, how it affected them, the parts that they, they, that, uh, that they actually dealt with. It is an often confusing uh, subject, <clears throat> the difference between what is a, an architecture and what is a design. And really, the two things are not really that different. What they are is different in terms of intensity or in terms of degree because they do, do both provide one thing. Whereas an architecture provides the broad strokes of a system, it tells you the greater components and relationships between the greater components. A design gets down into the details about what any one of the components that could make up the system are. Um, Naturally, you could one, you could also say that even the smaller components may also have our, our architectures within within themselves. So the better way to think about this is that in the world of designing something, if you think about it as a hierarchy, as a tree structure, the architectures are going to be the things that are closer to the top of the tree, and the designs are going to be those things that are closer to the bottom of the tree. So after Mr. Zachman started talking with, again, his colleagues to create his architecture services framework, he noticed that typically three components would always come up, three different perspectives on architecture, but that were common across all conversations that he had. And so the first part of those three components was data. Those are the things you would either operate with or operate on. The second one was functions and processes, what you actually did with the data. And the third one was location and network. So locations and networks are more physical things that say where are the components and how do these components come together. That is to say, what are, what are the bridging mechanisms, whether um, it's shipping a package via UPS or it's a phone call or it's um, a network wire. Either way, that would be the network component. The original Sagman framework, with its original three dimensions of data, function, and network, worked pretty well for a while. However, over the years, between 87 uh, and 1992, John Sackman, in cooperation with his colleague John Zoa, realized that in order to be more comprehensive and capture uh, more aspects about a, frame, about a system, and including them in their framework, they added three new extensions to the, to the original three dimensions of data, function, and location. Those three were people, time, and motivation. With that, we, act, we have a dichotomy here of names for what are really identical activities. What we are saying here is that the framework calls for data, function, network, people, time, and motivation, but they also correspond to the what, the how, the where, the who, and the why. So really, when you think about it, if you ever saw uh, movies that have reporters in them, reporters always say, what are the five W's? Well, these are the five W's with one extension, which of course is the, the uh, how, which starts with H. 
but it answers every question you would want to know about a system. And it is those six questions specifically. Why is the system there? That's motivation. The what does it do? That, what does it operate with? That's the data. Well, how does it work? That's the function. Who uses it? And at what point in time? And that, of course, is the people. What are the sequence of events within this particular system? Function of time. So as you can see, the framework is pretty, pretty comprehensive. And right here in the next segment, we'll actually take a look at the framework itself in its graphical form and kind of show the, some of the, uh, some of, explain some of the cells. And now we'll talk about the framework itself. As you can see on the graphic, we have on the left and right hand side, because they're mirror images of each other, the five actors of the five roles or the five players and their five activities described in the framework. So those roles are the scope, the business model, the system model, the technology model, and the detailed representations. And as again, here they are down the side. Scope, business model, system model, technology model, and detailed representations. Those five activities map to a role or to a physical role that a human would play. So at the very top, we'd say that the scope is something that is done by the planner. The business model is something that would be of interest to the business owner. The system model would be of interest to the designer. The technology model would be of interest to the builder. And the detailed representations are what is of interest to either the subcontractor, the provider, or the worker. Likewise, along the top are the five uh, dimensions, or correction, six dimensions that was, we said answer the questions about the, about the architecture. The what, how, when, who, where, and why. So, if you will look, right along the top, we'll see that data is the what, function is the how, network is the where, people is the who, time is the when, motivation is the why. So, now that we have this schema, we have this matrix, of activities versus actors versus um, versus dimensions, we can pretty much look at any system of any kind, it doesn't have to be an IT system, and answer questions about that system on the basis of this model. So for example, if, it, if we took a bank and we wanted to know about the branch offices, where are branch offices, where would they fall in this model? Well, we know it's a location issue, and we also understand that it is a business model, so here we are. That intersection right there where the pen is going indicates some documentation or some, um, some products, some artifacts that define something about the branches of that particular bank. If we wanted to, if we cared about where the servers were, the data centers were for the bank, well, we're still in the same column because we're still talking about a location type thing, but now we're talking about it from a different perspective. Now we're talking about a technology thing. So again, our cross-reference is the technology model, and we come across to location, and here we go. In this particular cell refers to things like where are the data centers, where are the servers in the data centers, and all that sort of, that sort of information. And that's an example of more or less how this framework works. So again, <clears throat> the Zachman framework architecture is intended to be a comprehensive model and framework for organizing your thoughts about all the kinds of activities and actors that go into supporting an architecture. Again, where an architecture is a broad design, if you will, about a system. So it considers all the players, it considers all the activities. The Zachman framework is not prescriptive, you do not have to do all of it. You can do just the parts that make sense to your organization. It is extensible in that if there's something missing here that applies only because of the unique circumstance of your organization, you can do it. And more importantly, it has no artifacts and it has no processes. That is to say, each one of these cells indicates an activity that has to happen about that particular type of dimension. But it doesn't tell you that you have to use a Visio product or this other product. It doesn't tell you that you have to write a particular um, concept of operations or maybe an Excel spreadsheet with data. No, it asks you for nothing. Filling out the artifacts that satisfy this framework is up to the architect or architects and designers and business owners and really all the stakeholders in the enterprise.
This is only a guide and an indicator to help people that are thinking in terms of enterprise architecture to make sure that they don't miss anything. And really, that is the only, or not, that's not the only, it is the particular beauty of this framework. And so that concludes this briefing, and I hope uh, this has been helpful. Thank you. Goodbye.